<laughs> if you want to buy me a butter infuser, I will use that. I will, I will, I will make infused butter goods, eat them, and... And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly Show. It covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Half-Life fan, fan remake, English, man. Black Mesa has released a playable version of that Zen map. But unfortunately, Linux users, we're going to have to wait just a little bit longer, but there's a little bit of a hack for that. And there's a steamy summer sale. It's upon us. So hashtag Corgis. Corgis! Yeah, uh, Proton makes broken Kickstarter dreams come true. And I hate it. And Ubuntu walks back the 32-bit plan. Valve isn't blinking. The Summer Grand Prix has uh, people confused and indie devs not too happy. And someone pre uh, proposes esports for engineers. The only thing I see being stretched is definitions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. I'm Vince Stone. That is Jordan Sveng. And that beautiful corgi delight full of the clap is one Pedro Mateus together with you at home chat room dynamic helping us form the most sexy of Ultrons filled with cocaine. Ooh. <laughs> Allegedly, high Coca Cola sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> Coke Zero. There's zero cocaine I'm just here. Just say it, man. You know, quit with the flavors. Just put the Coke back or get off the poo thing. Shit, <laughs> get off the pot. Yes, that thing. That English. Oh, man. Before we Coke get or get off the Coke. poo. That's a, sh that's a show title. <laughs> just nailing it right out of the box. Don't worry. Stick around. There's actual Linux gaming news coming up after the shenanigans. Uh, what are we up to, man? Um, I want to get right out and say it. This is the last show of June heading into July. We're going to be starting an hour earlier. This is only going to affect the live viewers. So keep that in mind. That just means that normally when we start the pre pre super shows, and which is an hour before we go live for the general public, um, we'll just be kicking off live. So keep that in mind. If you're listening at home, you're like, I don't care. I listen to this driving to work on Mondays. Shut up. And I will. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Jordan? Oh, I'm. It's a long great. weekend here. So I'm. <laughs> Took the time to set up that UMC 404 that Ven Dunn shipped me a couple months ago. And I did. Learn, begun the arduous <laughs> process of learning ardor. Mm. Ardour. Ardour. I, ardour. Ardour. It, it, I hate saying ardour, but the guy who makes it, I've watched a talk, and he's like, I call it ardour. And I'm like, geez, really? I'm still going to call it ardour. <laughs> It's gonna I, I mean, I, it, it, feel, it feels better saying ardour. Doesn't it? I mean, it, it seems it, like grammatically correct. It, it it has it has the better mouth feel. I mean, if it was going to be ardour, it'd be like a r d u u r ardour. Ar ardour. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I guess uh, how it's spelled, it's ardour. I man. Uh, <laughs> it was or, kind or, of fun or, though. It could, it could be hodor. <laughs> you got the interface. You're going to be able to do some. Um, yeah. More interesting things in our satellite office in Toronto. It was. Yeah. You're like, hey, I'm playing around. I got a little text message. I was like, it's stopwatch. And it's like, well, no way, wait. He's like, so. uh, you want to get on call? Like, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Smart move, man. Do not reinvent the, wheels, ladies and gentlemen. But I mean, yeah, I'm going through the documentations like, okay, there's clearly there's clearly some assumptions being made about things that I don't understand. I should probably get that foundational knowledge first. Mm. And then this will start to make sense. Oh, man. What's up, P-Baby? Uh, over here, not much has happened because I was actually genuinely busy uh, over the course of the week at work. So, unless you want to hear me whinge about people uh, thinking that they're far more important than they actually are, yeah, no, it's, uh, my life is boring. It's pretty so, cool. Wait, he's wait, like, wait. I, no, 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 he's going to say, I was busy at work, and everyone in Discord's like, you've been playing GTA Five all week, what are you talking about? I, I, I was going to ask, like, how, how, how does that... How <laughs> I does played, that... like, two hours of GTA Five. what the hell are you on about? <laughs> GTA how did, how, and you how, how does what you describe differ any degree from, like, the normal Saturday night content coming out of you? I mean, there's, uh... There isn't. No, no difference. <laughs> oh no, those are bots. There, there's are dead. A, an actual reason behind Jordan. my whinging on Saturday nights. <laughs> mm. Hey uh, man, one thing that doesn't whinge is the horse because it keeps coming. Well, all right, it whinges it, it, just it, a little it, it bit, just a little bit. <laughs> it says nay. It's the steam <laughs> Linux. Oh, day. Oh, we get sailed. 
But we need to talk about 32-bit support before we get to we that. We do. Because there wouldn't be much of a sale without it. Um, you can, you wouldn't be able to play most of the games, especially on Proton. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. So um, you might remember a bit of a kerfuffle from last week regarding uh, Valve, or not Valve, uh, Canonical announcing that, hey, 1910 is not going to have any 32-bit support which was followed by a screeching what from literally the rest of the Linux using internet. So uh, Valve basically goes into um, the response that they put out last week saying that, you know, based on based on that, we're not going to support 1910. They're basically saying this isn't any sort of condemnation of the Ubuntu project. This is just saying that we were working on some sort of containerized way to run Steam uh, so that everything exists within its own little bottle, but that's not ready yet. And you should not try to run Steam in a pure 64-bit system. So with that, we can't recommend running Steam in, you know, six, in Ubuntu 19.10. Uh, but, you know, Va Va our Canonical realizing that surprisingly soon, actually, that they made a bad decision has decided to step back uh, what they're doing. They're offering limited support. They're going to be building a couple uh, select 32-bit libraries so that, you know, stuff like Wine and Steam will work. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, uh, it, like earlier, that was one of the things uh, Plagman put out on Twitter. He's like, yo, uh, wow, didn't expect this to drop in like a very short time window. It's like, we could, our time could be better spent instead of trying to scramble to come up with some half working solution for this. Uh, like just working on the client and stuff like that. So how about mm, get stuffed? <laughs> with 1910 but you know what, what do you think i mean they're gonna have to work eventually like in the future to come up with something do you think they're gonna be like it's gonna be containerized on canonical well, like flat pack or something well that's what that's what they seem to be indicating in the article anyways mm. that um that they're in researching like containerization so that they can just run everything in their own little sandbox because they don't want to they're they're saying that now they're going to be working with uh, other distributions like uh, Popo, Popos, Fedora, etc., to like better integrate Steam into those distributions. So that may actually be what it is. Just like we're get, we're gonna we're gonna have our own self contained library set. It's gonna run in its own little sandbox. You other distributions go do whatever you want. We're not gonna interfere with how your operating system works. Hmm. Could, could be a thing. Yeah, and uh, you know on uh, on Wednesday I made the uh, assumption that. Going by what uh, Plagman had said on his uh, tweet when Ubuntu decided to announce that they were going to drop 32-bit, that uh, it's like, yeah, if you fuck with us, we'll just fuck right off and leave you hanging dry. Uh, but that's not entirely what they did. It's like, yeah, we talked with them with that. It's just that they did it far earlier than it, we it had expected. It came across as like, yeah, we, we've chatted. Like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like yeah. yeah they had mentioned that they were going to do this but we, we, we thought yeah it's going to be a thing for the future we didn't expect it to be in the next release right. over Techni the next three months wh wh which admittedly <laughs> is technically the future but you know <laughs> they're, they're hoping for a little more lead up I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the best kind okay uh, what the hell is this cell about man? wargies uh, wargies <laughs> I don't know I the, the second story I I feel a little bit better because I, I genuinely, when this came out, I looked at it, I read over it, and I was like, I had the Skinner Simpson moment. I was like, am I like not with it anymore? And it's like, no, it's the kids who are wrong. I have genuinely still to this have fuck all idea of what this new Steam cell is. It's the Grand Prix, and you apparently pick a team, you complete rewards, and these little characters move except for the corgi which was like curb stomping everyone but then they made it run backwards yesterday which really didn't piss off the entire internet apparently it did <laughs> and um gamification of sales to which i responded to with uh, all right whatever i mean that this was after the initial um steam sale the 504 steam sale which is how it wow. started for the first 30 minutes <laughs> where they're 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 just, they're just giving out free 504s yeah so i want to <laughs> ask both of you um i i looked around like genuinely for um some to my it's like hmm what do, is there anything I don't have, and I mean, I was looking hard too. I was like, G give me, give me a decent price on something. I, I didn't see like the only thing, uh, if what was it, uh, near 
automatic tomato. If that was going mm-hmm. to be like 75 offers are going to sling you guys a copy or anybody who edited on their wish list, it wasn't. I Sky, was waiting for that. Yeah, Skyrim yeah, I, job. I was like, I, I already bought the retail disc of that years ago. And I was like, I already spent 70 bucks on that thing. And they're like, yeah, best we can do is like 20. It's like, that's not happening for a seven-year-old game. Um, What did you find, yeah. Jordan? Anything? No, no. I, I too was looking for like near going to maybe 20 bucks. That's... I, I was I was thinking about that. Well, a I, I say this every Steam sale, the, diminishing that, returns, that right? Me. And there yeah. was nothing to. But yeah, as as the years go on, and as you like accumulate games, these Steam sales are like, well, I have everything I've already owned, and bundles. Bundles are really the are really the killer here because you know if something just randomly goes on goes on sale in a bundle, it's like, oh yeah, you can just grab that for ten bucks with like five other games. Fuck yep. yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and there's no there's no reason to to go buy it in a sale anymore, right? Well, I mean, yeah. full. I do the humble monthly thing now that proton is it was like fuck i'm just gonna collect games just in case you know mm. <laughs> For the, it's, you, you 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 pulled the trigger on that i'm surprised it every now and then you get something decent and stuff i don't and then give it to people so yeah huh. well uh i did buy um a game that i played a long time ago that i hadn't seen for sale in over 15 years now that i think about it uh which was a uh, rogue squadron and I also got uh, GTA Five because it's been on my wish list since for like ever. And it, oh, fifty percent off GTA. Okay. Five. Oh, how, how's that running for you, girlfriend? <laughs> uh, it's uh, it, at first it wasn't running. Um, well, it was actually running very good. At least the FURPS counter on Steam and the benchmark was saying that I was uh holding well above a uh, hundred FURPS, mm-hmm. but it did not look smooth oh. and then well, uh in discord ven actually suggests it's like have you tried turning off e-sync okay i'll try turning off e-sync so i did that the FURPS came down by like 40 so i was getting between 50 and 90 and but it was smoother like the frame timing was very much more consistent and yeah, then I, atomic I, s was like Oh, uh, that's GTA Five. Yeah, if you get more than a hundred FURPS, you always get crap on the frame timing. So just jack up all the graphics. So I did that. Turned eSync back on. It's like, oh, there we go. This is how it's well, played. I, the the game the game we we're throwing chairs at this week kind of proves the fact that that frame display on the Steam overlay is sometimes a bit of a dirty liar. Oh and... yeah. <laughs> well, I I think it does a very good job of showing you the frame rate, but not like frame timing. The yeah. The Vulcan. Yeah. I wish there was the Vulcan DXVK overlay with a frame timer built in mm. to just the regular overlay all the time because that's handy to like. All right, well, where's that tick every seven seconds? What's causing yeah. that? And mm. all right, so so the, the next out- one. Where are you going with it, buddy? Yeah. I was just gonna say, like, I tried wrapping my brain around this next story, and it's like I don't—I still don't understand what the fuck's going on with it. This is this okay. next story made me feel better though, because like, wait a minute, no one else understands what's going on here. A lot of people were confused, and as it turns out, well, it justified every single outlet out there uh, making their own articles about it. This one comes from Ars Technica, uh, and indie developers suggest Steam Summer Sale confusion is hurting their games, and. Basically, the confusion sprung around the fact that every day, uh, someone on the winning team will get a game from their wish list. What wasn't very clear, uh, Valve did say that it would be the top game, but the way that they had phrased it originally uh, was that uh, you should update your um, your wish list uh, to make sure that only the games that you actually wanted were there, since you had a chance to win it. So a lot of people Dude. started culling. Yeah, their <laughs> this their wish list. Like, oh no, and it wasn't very clear. And a lot of indie developers are like, "Well, man, that's one way how we gauge people's interest in our games." And yeah. they destroyed that. And it's not just that; it's not just like uh, gathering people's interest because the number of people that wish list a game contribute to that game's um, trust Exposure. score, oh, which okay. is that. Uh, uh, that score that Valve counts to whether or not you're allowed to have certain community trading features cards. like trading cards, uh, which allow you to generate extra revenue. So if your game is all of a sudden being dropped from thousands of people, uh, people's uh, wish lists, then 
yeah, your trust score is going to take a bit of a hit. And indie developers were pissed. <laughs> they were pissed. It's like, what the fuck, Val? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I can I can definitely see that too, how that is an extra fuck you because you know all the wishlist stuff is like keyed into the like all the entire Valve recommendation engine so just having people call their wishlist in such a way would completely completely mess up those statistics and it's, it's been, especially in during like a sale when people are competing for views all of a sudden mm -hmm. now now that algorithm is fucking you over so it's not it's not great did you uh either of you modify your wish list? Anybody at home do that? I'm like, hmm, what? Should I move something up top just in case? Uh, I bought the top two games that were on my wish list, so those disappeared. Listen, <laughs> Does that count? No, because you're a monster. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, uh, new website, new company, new pool. What's this got to do anything about Steam? Well, this has to do about Steam, and it may not look immediately obvious, but uh, Roman Gilg is uh, you, being... Why, why do you think everybody with a beard works for Steam, Pedro? Come on, seriously. I don't. Th this I'm is just a recurring saying issue. that <laughs> uh, he, on his uh, little announcement post that he had a website overhaul and that he was working with new partners uh, and was doing some uh, freelance business... He also does some things with the Valve open source group. Yes. And as a freelancer, he was contracted by Valve to work on certain gaming-related X-Server projects and improve KWIN in that regard and for general desktop usage. His words. Uh, so it's, yeah, you know, fixing KWIN at this point would actually make me all the happies because... Right now on my system, that is the single most likely thing to fail, and it does occasionally. It's not as bad as it was like six months ago, but it still crashes. So, yeah, that needs fixing. I mean, it's it's good that uh, that Valve is like engaging freelancers to help uh, make you know Steam run better on Linux as a platform, and you know. Working directly with uh, DEs is a way to make sure that your interests are going to be fairly well represented. Mm -hmm. yep. So, I mean, it seemed, it seems legit, right? Val Valve's been giving money to a ton of other open source projects. I was about to say, I mean, K KDE they've been working a little like... bit with K1 before, though. This isn't the first we've heard of that, is it? No. no. The, I, think, I think this is like to make it run better with their uh, compositor as well. Mm, I yeah. don't know. So somewhere a gnome fan human is screaming. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean that, that that's just a true statement in general. Like it yeah, doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, and any hour of the day, there is probably some gnome user screaming. Simply that, listen, man. They just want to change the screen resolution. That's it. That's all they want to uh, do. Still, still yeah. a better love story than Steel Rats. Am I right? The thing <laughs> with K Win and compositing crashing. Proton, is... proton, two way. We don't okay. need an explanation about your love for KDE. Everyone knows. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it's that's out. This is another one of these minor maintenance releases. Uh, there, there's a fix for uh, not the most minor. What was it, like two weeks ago? They're like meh. Period. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. We 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 fixed a crash. All right, meh. No, uh, here here. Uh, if the game uses an in uh, actual like web browser as a game component, mm -hmm. it'll fix fix a couple of crashes in relation to that. Uh, upgrade Wine Mono. Uh, all better alt tab support is always welcome. Alt tab support is still one of those things that's oh, a little, go, a go. little iffy depending on the game. Go take the Doom challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take any Bethesda game challenge. Really. Man, I, when I was playing like Doom like two weeks ago, uh, and I, I forget who it was in uh, Shadow Realm uh, when I was doing this stream, they're like, "Alt tab out." Does that work? And I was like, "We are not going to find out on this stream." <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the 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 bit the big change here is that they're fixing uh, issues with uh, Bloodstain Ritual of the Night uh, that are causing a crash, and I'm 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 I'm, 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 a, little, I'm a little mad about that. I don't like that. I don't like that Valve is fixing issues for Bloodstained so that the fucking Bloodstained devs can justify. Oh yeah, see we dropped Linux support and nothing nothing ever changed. Blah blah blah. You know, fuck you, man. You took people's money and you didn't give them anything in return. Look, that's I, kind of. Uh, I had to use that. I don't have it on Jordan's shot, but there we go. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's listen. Let, let, let me let me live in my fantasy world where fucking pure capitalistic greed gets you know punished and disincentivized. No, no. <laughs> I don't know. We were talking about this in the pre pre super shows, and and you know when it boils down to it, because uh, Pedro and I got. 
burnt with Carmageddon hard. Mm -hmm. And not only would you ever get a Linux board, they actively mocked Linux and like, ah, screw you guys. And Proton Dave runs like ass. And on top of it, on top of it, even if it did run, it's a shit game. So there's no redemption for the money that we spent on this. This, however, no. for the backers, <laughs> at least Proton has came along in the time, you know, they told uh, the people who gave them money and they said, hey, we're going to give you a Linux board. They told them to politely go fuck themselves because of reasons. At least we have a Proton button now. There's not, hey, let's install Y or set up something else. You can just tap that Proton button, fam, yeah, yeah. and it works. I'm not saying it's a great solution. It's not perfect. Yeah. But and, for and, the people yeah. who spent money on the game, it's better than what was there previously. Right, hey, and yeah, you, you, you brought up a valid point in the pre-show as well, where it's like, you know, at least it's not, oh, well, it's on the Epic Store, so, you know, go fuck yourself extra yeah. hard, right? So, well, listen, I, 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 under, I, under, I understand that, but, like, I, I, cognitive dissonance is a thing. I can hold two things. I can hold two opinions that are contradictory. Yeah, it's easy to spot. You start drooling on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, to the alt tab thing, one of the things I noticed is uh, if you alt tab out of a game and then you go back in, it'll now actually uh, grab the game will actually grab the cursor properly again, which is really nice. Mm. Uh, but in doing so, it breaks uh, a little a really nice uh, bit of functionality that Proton introduced, which is uh, if you have a game in full screen, instead of uh, resizing or uh, resetting the screen resolution whatever the game is, like regular wine does, Proton actually scales it up to whatever resolution your screen happens to be at. Uh, <laughs> but with this uh, new version of Proton, if you all tab out and you all tab back in, uh, you get a window at whatever resolution you were running the game. So let's say you have a 3840 by 2160 monitor and you all tab out and then you all tab back in and you were running the game at 1080p, a full screen and it was scaling, it was all good. You go back to a 1080p window. That's that's a bit annoying. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you, Ven, you you and I, we both tend to play games in 1080p windows quite a bit. You, so. Welcome to the hot lifestyle of streamers, man. That's like step yeah. one. You launch a game, you're like, okay, can I get it in windowed in 1080? That, before you even care about the game, even if it's something right. you want to play yeah. for yourself, you're like, what if I like this and I want to show it off? Yeah, this, yeah, this is an yeah. important thing. I um, run games in windows when I stream. You, you got well, other problems, stop, well, stop, stop, stop running Windows. <laughs> the, <laughs> the one thing I always check, Valve, if you're listening, make the goddamn Batman Arkham Knight work. Because, I mean, I love Lutris is great, but man, that's a whole lot of extra steps. Play it. And that game, I want to play it some more. Right. Indeed. All right. All right. Uh, other, th other thing that you can use to, you know, have Steam launch I, I games. Can, okay, Steam what DOS. version of Batman can I play in DOS? I'm sure there is one. Oh yeah, probably like it's probably it's probably like the Michael Keaton Batman too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not sexy Batman. I'm pixelated Batman. Yes, yeah, pixelated Michael Keaton. Anyways, this is the X release of Steam DOS, uh, release four oh four. Uh, or four, not four zero. Um, so this this project continues to chug along, uh, adds MIDI configuration for a bunch of Star Wars games, some Doom games. Um, and you know, there's that startup issue for, you know, everyone's favorite doom clone, super 3d Noah's Ark. Um, so for the, for those of you who don't know what this is, it's basically, um, it uses the steam plugin engine to give you a compat additional compatibility tool in this case, DOS box. So you don't necessarily have to run DOS games in line or proton. You can just run them in DOS box and have all your configs there. And it's kind of neat. And it opens up the door for other things like, uh, opens, uh, options for having open source engine re-implementations as a runner in Steam, which I want yep. someone I want someone to fork this and do that bit because that's the cool stuff. Now, th this is all things that can be done with Lutris too, correct? But then, but then you have Listen, to go. I, I'm just to trying to you save still have a to run. baguette being thrown at a TV tonight. <laughs> you still Listen, have to what, run. Listen, the I want Windows that baguette. version of Steam <laughs> through wine. <laughs> Yoda. I want, I want, I want that, I want that baguette in my face. <laughs> Give me a baguette, baguette. strider. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right, we we got some well, game updates. Yeah, <laughs> there's still some game updates to get through, and the first one is uh, Beat Hazard, and uh, with Beat Hazard two, uh, they've added a new bit of functionality. Like every track that you play has a unique shipped, uh, shipped? No, just shipped? a ship. Did unique you just shipped, shipped your ship. ship. 
Oh, yes. shit. I, I totally I, ship, I ship my, my ship. pants. <laughs> but yeah, uh, each song uh, has a unique ship attached to it. So if you like to play something that's a bit, uh, it's got a bit more of a oomph, going for it, it'll, there'll be a lot of spikes to your ship. Uh, if you like to play something a bit more mellow, your ship will be very small. A lot small, of spikes. Very so, oh, 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 okay, I, I, I have two. I have, I have the two questions that everyone actually wants answers to. All right. Number, number one: What kind of ship does Bikey Man produce? And dun, dun, number two: dun, 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 dun. If you run Taste You Like Yogurt through this game, is that ship going to be white? See, I, my, I, my, my brain just straight up went defense <laughs> mode. You're like, you are not humming that for another week. Like, okay. <laughs> Can't even front you the girl I really want. I want yeah. But yeah, I played a lot of uh, Beat Hazard on Android back in the day because there was a Humble Bundle that uh, came with uh, a bunch of the previous games that had been released on uh, other Humble Bundles, mm -hmm. but for Android this time around. So that's where I ended up playing the most of it, and it is a fun game. If you don't mind, you know, finding your own music and adding it to hey, it. You know, ultimately, it's always good to see a game that's been out for a while getting some updates. You're like, hey, all right, yep. yeah, maybe I'll go try that out. And you can do what I was like, wait, I own that game. Oh, I own that game. Okay. Uh, we'll check it out. Rocket Cars. <laughs> yes, Rocket League Patch version notes. one. Yeah, 1.65 is out. You get the salty oh, shores, oh, the nighttime. No question for tonight. Can we play vol the volleyball tonight? Uh, appar apparently the nighttime map is available. Yes. I don't know. I I think that's the volleyball one. We we'll find out. We we we, <laughs> we will try. I I put in the show notes Sandy nights and regretful mornings because fucking <laughs> I don't I don't know. It made me think of Sandy. Uh, but yeah, that what what we care about extra fucky modes for the after show mm -hmm. are being included. Uh, there's there's some new antenna, some uh, a lot lots of fixes for the switch actually. No Linux stuff. So moving on. Well, hang on. Let's see. Is hey, it's nine ninety nine? So mm -hmm. I, I guess if you if you already don't own Rocket League, despite the fact that and, it's been, uh, they, they they gave it out for free, it's been on sale. They've never it's given in it the out Epic for, Store. When did they give it out for free? Now. Uh, the Steam controller. They gave. Oh, you bought a Steam that, controller right. and you got the game for free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's free in Canada. You buy free, something. free. <laughs> but, right. like, but, but like, people bought a lot of people bought Steam controllers. The biggest thing that it's I had like noticed getting a about free STD. Uh, this announcement yeah. was the ever-growing list of known issues. The, the, like the previous couple of versions, like Pedro, okay, Pedro, so you don't have to worry about any. These are all going to be addressed in the Epic launcher in that version, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what do you, what do you, I mean, come on, there's nothing to worry. And about. when they lose, like I don't know, maybe half of their uh, PC player numbers. <laughs> well, well, the, all 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 the, all the issues seem to be affecting uh, Switch and Xbox people. So you know, this is Not true. All, Unfortunately, when you think about it, it's like, what would it take to get everyone on Ep A when it goes free to play? That's happening. Mark my words. Or B before that happens. Exclusive hat. Oh, oh no, dude, dude! What, what, what you're not seeing is the Fortnite Rocket League crossover, where now you have to actually play Rocket League through Fortnite. Dude, there will be rocket cars in Fortnite. I guarantee it. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, radio control. Cars no, dude, that they, you they, they, control. They, somebody's gonna be able to drive the car, and the other person's gonna be on top trying to dry hump it. I don't know. I don't make the rules. <laughs> Nisa, right. it's a thing. Yeah. Zen, there's a technical beta. This is a map. You know, everyone is sitting around like, "Where's Half Life Three? These guys are next level. These motherfuckers are advanced. They want you to wait just as long on the last level of the remake of the first Half Life. Currently on sale, by the way, sixty percent off, seven ninety nine. This is the technical beta, and this is Black Mesa. There is a Linux version um, that has an on and off again ability to what's... Oh, right, fucking launch under Linux. It's currently mm -hmm. in that not launching phase. But if you join in the beta and you set up um, Enable Proton 428, it will launch and run like poo. However... <laughs> Uh, looking around and it's like, okay, where, where, where's the popcorn? I, I'm, I think it looks okay, but this is one of those things, no matter what this map brings to the table, it's not going to win, man. And we're like, it, what, three years? Too, 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 too much hype. Way too oh. much hype, man. For, for a, yeah. a level. 
And and here, here here's the thing too. It's like oh yeah, we we want to solicit uh, bug reports and feedback. So this is why we're making it available. Good but you know, them. but we're not we're not gonna you know put it out on the Linux version because that's a be- that's a great way to test your game is to only test one of the versions that you sell to people. More on yep. that in the review section. Um. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, they have a, an interesting quote. It's like, running the game at 4K resolution at max settings may drastically lower your frame rate. Isn't that the case with nah. all games? Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. The nope. higher the resolution <laughs> that you run your game at, Pedro, you bought faster into the performs. hype, man. You, you, you bought into big green NVIDIA. L- l- listen. <laughs> You 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 gotta you gotta play Crisis at six at like what three twenty by uh one eighty or whatever it is eight eight by six baby get real come on three twenty one eighty yeah ten twenty four seven sixty eight yeah oh yeah that that, that that that's that good shit uh coming ten twenty four by six hundred netbook resolution uh ten eighty but what was it ten fifty by it wasn't quite ten eighty uh what was that bullshit well, six, six, sixteen fifty by ten eighty yeah all right yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's go. Uh, at least it's not thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight fuck that resolution <laughs> fuck it straight to hell it's the worst I hate it LGC cares fuck coming up next one two three it's easiest A B C do re mi install fucking proton I don't know he he ran out of words I'm sorry. It's the news segment, but before we get to the news, you probably are already with your mouse over on the little thing you know what? looking may, may, for when may, the may, shilling ends so you can get into the actual what, news. What if we do Stop it that. after the news and just fuck with it? <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 I'm cool for doing that. It's like, oh, yeah, you thought this was the chair position. Nah, man, it's an ad. Fuck no. you. <laughs> hey, man, at least our ad is like we get to thank the people that make this shit possible, man. It's awesome. It, it, yeah, it's, it's an it, ad it's, for us. It's, it's an ad it's an ad for us, an ad for you, an ad for the world. Okay, that's a good place to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Patreon patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Go there, give us money. You get some cool shit in exchange for that, like access to our Discord channel or access to the show notes that we use to compile. I made this a show. Hot, spicy video for all the people you- curious about how we do OBS shit. This is true. Uh, you get all lots, all sorts of behind the scenes stuff. You even get access to the pre pre super shows, in, which is an extra hour of Linux gaming <laughs> bitching. That honestly doesn't <laughs> sound like a reward, Jordan. <laughs> it, it gets thrust upon you like so much burden. Oh. Uh, we we also got we also got like a couple Amazon things uh, for you as Porja as well. Not many. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, we you got we got ourselves have, what, we you, got wish lists. Yeah, you have one. Pedro has one. Jordan has one. I got like a stupid, boring one for the studio, and you don't want to mess with it. Nothing as heavy on there. Do you guys have anything? I, all right, let's creep on your wish list. Let's see, Pedro. Do you have anything good? I have a ca- a couple of cameras. One is just a refurb version, which is a four hundred four. All right, <laughs> there's the four hundred four. I will be getting. What that do you need? Two September. heat sinks for? He ne- he needs like I've, eight heat sinks. Look, he's he's making a mech suit. I've out seen of heat you sinks. without a shirt on, sweetheart. One you of don't those need two. is going into Nori's PC. The uh-huh. other one is going into this one when the thirty seven hundred X gets bought. You want to pre-order it, you fucking hipster. They, no. No, I don't want to pre-order it. That's just my wish list. That's the default wish list. That's where stuff goes to when I hit wish list. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay? All right, let, let's check out Captain Incentive's D&D nerd shit, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. all it is. I mean, there, there's weightlifting shit in there, too. There is. <laughs> there's, there's, cook, there's cooking shit. If you want to buy me games for my Nintendo Switch, you can. If you want to buy me a butter infuser, I will use that. I will I will, I will. will make infused butter goods, eat them, and then do the show. You, that was, I hovered around that for a minute. I was like, do I want to get that? Um, hey, if you want to be like the cool people having a party right now in L.A. with um, Jill Strider. Um, uh, cool, cool person. Because only one person only is wearing one piece, the shirt. Yeah, the person on the shows uh, has a little bit of our merch at isstore.letixemcast.com, or you can just tap that store button. We got Hell Elks. We got our faces on shirts. We got the classic Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. And, of course, Frank. Um, those are cool. We got uh, diecast Nothing. stickers, and they are. We even have a Hello hoodie. Don't ask me how that happened, but it's a thing. It's brilliant. It'll keep you warm in the summertime. Yes. Oh, and we do have. We have one final thing we got to talk oh, yeah. about. We got to. Th- we got to thank Aldius. Aldius gave us some shit. He gave us the signal from Tolva for myself, Pedro, Ven, and Jill. 
Um, so yes. we're maybe going to throw some chairs at that at some point. Maybe. So thanks, th thanks, thanks a lot, Elias. If That's you want to cool. send us shit, do it. At send your own risk. This. Your own name, your own peril. <laughs> <laughs> Coming right, up right, first. Right. Let's, let's talk about DXVK. DXVK. Yes, so DXVK is uh, up to version 1.2.3. Very nice version number right there. Okay, hang on, hang uh, on, hang on. We, we, we just got to make this thing since everybody's listening. Um, somebody, like, tomorrow afternoon or Monday, just, like, retweet this show and be like, these morons are pronouncing DXVK like dicks, vicks, or something like that. <laughs> and let's just own that. Let's just make it a thing. D dicks, dicks, vicks, D -I pickles. D-I-K-X-V-I-K. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Just dicks, 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 vick. <laughs> It's okay, like so uh, they fixed a couple of bugs, uh, some of which were with Unreal Engine 4 games showing uh, error messages at the end. There was a regression in World of Warships uh, that would break texture loading. Uh, there were, you know, minor CPU overhead optimizations. And my favorite one is uh, improved memory allocation behavior under memory pressure. This may, in some situations, improve performance on lower end NVIDIA GPUs. You mean the 970, don't you? The mm. Three and a half gigs, don't you? Don't you? Let it <laughs> go. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Fuck you, Nvidia. So, so I, I mean, so, so now, now that there's a new DXVK version out, next week we're gonna have a new Proton version. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Wh why? <laughs> what's the running theory? I mean, not that I'm complaining at all, but the DX. Dixvic version of uh, always drags ass in Proton. Uh, I because I, I, I think they actually like take some time to like validate the change to see if anything's broken. On do, do you think well, it's that, or they just like they didn't get around to it? More valve, I, 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 you know, valve date. It, yes. valve time. <laughs> yeah, no, it's probably like oh yeah, you, this this came in past the merge window, so it's got to wait until next week or some shit. I don't, I don't know. But it's, it's out, it's for your perusal. If you're using Lutris, it will get ingested because Lutris builds the Git version of DXVK. If you're in Proton, too fucking bad. You gotta wait. So Good it is. news, everyone. Uh, we got an update on actually probably one of the best platformers I've ever played, uh, Silk Song, the creators of Hollow Knight. You know them, Team Cherry. Lovely, lovely, fine human beings. Uh, they're just reporting back from their trip to E3. That's Nintendo, so we're not gonna play that. Um, <laughs> Just some updates on how things are going to work. And the one thing I took away from this, because I'm like, put it in my veins. You were going to be able to play as Hornet, right, Pedro? Yes, yeah. uh, you get to play as Hornet. And there's a couple of differences with how uh, Hornet's uh, health and like the little masks that she acquires as she kills enemies and how they work. And there's also the silk meter, which... <laughs> With uh, with if you played Hollow Knight, you could restore a single mask of health, uh, by using up some of your uh, accumulated uh, like experience or bug, souls. Ju bug juice. Well, no, bug I mean, yeah, it, it's a direct representation of how many um, like scarves you have shoved up your butt. Pretty much, and uh, that's with, how that magic uh, trick works. Yes. Huh? No, with the Hornet, you, you can heal up to three uh, of those uh, health masks at once very quickly, but you immediately drain your whole silk meter. So anything that would also rely on the silk is gone. And if you get hit while she's healing, it's gone. <laughs> so it's so yeah, the game is still not holding your hand. <laughs> the, 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 way, the way it's kind of described, which is kind of interesting, is they want the fights to be like very kind of swingy. So it's going to be a lot of back and forth. You're taking a beating, but then you recover at the last minute and you start laying on a beating, but then you run out of steam. So it, it's supposed to it's supposed to have that sort of back and forth flow, which should be kind of interesting. Um, it'll definitely make uh, taking a more aggressive bent in the combat uh the gets the more desirable path as opposed to being a little more conservative like in vanilla hollow knight uh mm -hmm. there's also they also have some voice acting for the protagonist apparently this one actually talks yeah um, i don't know how i feel about that because i remember i still got to ring up team cherry and be like yo i need to talk to you come on the show um because they seem cool enough to do that uh we did that article how they you know put this thing together for like two bucks and a taco and they're like we just got like our mom and dad and friends and family to go rah, 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 rah. 
So yeah. I, I kind of feel like that's part of Hollow Knight. I don't know. Like, um, or maybe they hire the voice actress specifically just to do... Blah, 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 blah. Maybe. <laughs> I, the, the, the real question on everyone's mind is whether or not you should buy the game on release mm-hmm. or wait until all the free DLC for it comes out. Cause then, you have like, <laughs> then you get about like nine games for the price Jeez. of one. Yeah, I looked up. Yeah. I, I started playing Hollow Knight and I looked up and it was like 58 hours. Huh. Um, yeah. It's and, definitely a thing. Maybe know, they could get like a box. Bobcat Goldwith to do Hornet. That'd be good. <laughs> he doesn't do that anymore, but you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, one of the things that the they set up with the original Hollow Knight were a bunch of different characters, a bunch of different characters that they can use in future games to, say, tell a different story using similar but conveniently different gameplay. Like the they're sho- doing uh, now with sho- Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight did the similar thing because mm. uh, yep. they, they, the, they had the standalone game with Plague Knight and all that other stuff. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's a good way to build up your like Hollow Knight cinematic universe. How far do you, do you yeah, go? they could do, you, do like, this. Of, like, some of the baddies, like the life story and how he led to being like a baddie that like just some rando that you murked. <laughs> like, oh man, like. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm very excited about it. They were very firm on the release date of, are you familiar with a Valve time? Kind of like that, mm-hmm. but without Valve. So I, I, I mean, there, there's that old Miyamoto quote where like, uh, an unfinished game gets good eventually, but a crappy game, something or other, right? Like, I'm, I'm fine with them taking their time to put out a more polished product. But we, we've definitely seen what happens if, I'm just saying we've seen, I'm not going to say this is going to be the case with Team Cherry. But if you have infinite financing or way too much comfortable financing, you will fine tune a game into crap. Distance. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you could you could always take a break and play some checkers. Hot. Yeah. So this is uh, freeboardgame.org from the freeboardgame.org project on GitHub. I, I believe there might be a connection. I'm not 100. <laughs> percent I, I. That is com. Complete and utter conjecture. I will not have such uh, lollygagging. Sustained. Theory. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, so this t- this one takes a little bit of uh, an explanation. So, number one, boardgame.io is a Node.js framework for making board game rule sets. And you don't actually have to make the game. You just have to define the rules. And then the framework will, like, make an actual game. You define, like, what the steps are and the win conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is a handy way, uh, this board, boardgames.org is a handy way of, you know, playing these games, pl- actually playing these games online, and they have a hosted version that's curated, so they look for high quality implementations of board games like fucking tic-tac-toe or chess or checkers or some other shit, um, but, uh, you can roll your own because it's open source, they give you the, all the stuff you need to run your own boardgames.io server. Um, their AI on the tic tac toe can count a potato, apparently. I, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's it's a fucking solved game, right? Hey, you know what? I did play the battleship earlier. Like, we could have fun with that. I mean, there's, yeah. you, you can't have a bad time playing battleship. Yeah, and and I mean, like, considering the other, the only other two board game apps available on Linux, Tabletop Simulator and Vassal, are a little heavy. One, you know, is entirely insane and is a bit overkill in tabletop simulator and Vassal requires Java, which everyone here has an irrational hatred of. So Woo-hoo. say the fuck away from that. Yep. Um, so, you know, something in a browser is pretty nice. But yeah. Like Ben said, we could maybe play some battle shits. <laughs> uh, and you brought up checkers earlier. Checkers is the one that still has the under construction sign on it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I I was expecting like to see a prime minister when I clicked on it, and I was like, "What's going on?" <laughs> I, I was expecting to see Richard Nixon, but you know. Hey, man, things happen. Woof. But All hey, right. maybe you'd like to exercise while you're engineering. You talking about exercising? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell us about exercise, Pedro. Well, I uh, decided to see. It's like, oh, esports for engineers. Okay. I mean, a way to make money while doing engineering things. All right. No, it's a uh, 10 gigabyte tar.gz file that you can download that has uh, a couple of free games. Uh, they have the Grand Prix Legends Grand, demo. Grand, Grand it's Prix. It's free, but not open source. Uh, they also have MIG Alley and Free Falcon 6. So it's, um, they're all sims. They're all simulators. And basically what you're expected to do, according to that's their a, documentation... That's a naming convention close uh, to my heart right there, man. Uh, <laughs> well, that one's ba- Battle of Britain, so... Still. <laughs> 
but yeah, according to the documentation, uh, and it is a big ass manual that they give you. Um, uh, these are um. They're games that you're supposed to be engaged with and developing something for, not so much playing, uh, although you can do that too, while you're on a treadmill or you're on an exercise bike. Uh, so basically you do the Linus thing, like when he used to have that standing desk that he had on a treadmill, so he would walk and code at the same time. This is basically what they're expecting you to do as you get into these games. Now, the games are all set up, Basically, all you need to do is download them and run the appropriate sh files. Mm -hmm. Done, uh, and they do work. I, I tested them on Solus, and they ran out of the box. But yeah, they're all sim games, and they just expect you to be on an exercise bike at the same time. So basically, they're stretching the definition of esports. Uh, they're stretching uh, the definition sports. of sports, dude. I don't know about you, but my world drinking is an is an electronic <laughs> sport. And they're See stretching it. the definition of uh, what a game is because these Sims they barely qualify. I, Still you know, a better I, I, a love story I, than I, Dota Underworld Underlords. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think I could get away with doing like typing squats where like squat, <laughs> and then you they write a couple lines of code. No, and you, do, another squat, you put the keyboard on the ground of... and you hold like one of those extended arm things between the cheeks. <laughs> Keep no, yeah, no, no, and 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 when your code doesn't compile, you just drop the barbell on the laptop. Slip. And then, yeah, whoops. <laughs> so yeah, Whoa. like I said at the start of the show, the only stretching that's been uh, done here is of definitions. <laughs> All right. Well, the the next the next game we're going to be reviewing is a bit of a stretch to call it, you know, a game. Oh, but rats. Yeah, rats indeed. Throw some chairs at it. Welcome back to the Chair Inquisition. This is where we take a game and determine if it survives trial by Fedora, Solus, or Ubuntu. Then, and then only then, the question can be asked. What's fun? This week, we're taking a look at Steel Rats, developed by Tate Multimedia on the Unreal Engine 4. You can pick it up for about 22 bucks, but it's 50% off during the summer sale. What is it? Ride in style through the retro futuristic world of street rats, set in an alternate version of a 1940s USA, gear up and mount your chromed stallion. Sounds sexy. And save Coastal <laughs> City from the invading horde of junk box. Your motorcycle is your weapon designed to crush your enemies in awesome and stylish ways whilst traversing up, down, left, and right, over rooftops, and through enemy infested to tunnels uh when, did, when who, who gave us this game did we did we just pick this up did you buy it for us yeah, i just I picked remember. it up then bought yeah, us I all, thought it'd be cool. <laughs> all right well there you go let's let's kick off into it oh come ben, on I, I, we, we gotta wait a couple more minutes while i'm getting this shot set up that i forgot to no do. We, we, we we gotta reminisce about that one time that ven bought us a game boom, boom. I, I i remember ah, it it was 300 years ago <laughs> on the plains of, of Belfagor. past we got yeah. around to this nonsense uh all right how does it run over here on fedora 30 with a thread ripping 1920x 32 gigajoules of RAM, NVMEs, all that fun stuff, uh, powered by an NVIDIA 2060 video encoder and displayed at UHD on a ridiculously oversized monitor. Well, check this nonsense out. Uh, it is a marvel of technical failure. I let's just get that out of the way. I don't think this, that opinion is going to be argued during this uh, chair acquisition. It launches. Pretty much only on the second monitor, which is not my main monitor or my third dairy monitor. Um, and it bites down. It's like, I really like the second monitor. Like, well, can I get you out of full screen? It's like, no. Can I change your resolution? No. It's like, well, will I go and dick around, cock around with the INI file if you hunt that fucker down? It's like, okay, you can go in a window and drag it over here. That's great. Start it again. I'm back on that other monitor, you game. Um, however... Proton to the rescue. That's the only reason um, I'm participating in this review. Performance natively with the 2060 at 1080, it runs like rewarmed, but that's not a good thing. And uh, Proton Magic, what really pissed me off is I started Proton and it's DX11, so it's using Dixvic. And it was like crushing like 120, 130. Easy, no problem. Control wise, fuck this game. 100%. Um, it, it It's just brutally bad. I, I'm not down with that. Uh, doesn't work very well. Crap moves. Uh, you do press your buttons, and it does move. So I'm just going to say, you know, one share on technical that we could actually play it. 
Yeah, on Fedora 30, 64, but I tried this on two hardware sets. I tried it with the FX 8150 and the RX580 and with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080Ti. So the former box was set up, hooked up to the TV. I thought, hey, this is a side scroller. I'm going to sit back on my television and play it. And, you know, does why it do launch? You sit yes. back on your television? That's why you have to buy so many TVs. Listen, man, I, I have very, very Weirdo. strict comfort requirements. Yeah, um... But, um, so I, 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 you click launch and it does start up. So you do get a chair for that, <laughs> but who oh boy, who oh boy here, here's story time. So yeah, um, on the, on the 580 gets about 30 frames a second. It eats shit when it switches from uh, cinematic back to gameplay and it does it a lot, but it's playable. Um, but after a while I got tired of playing it at 30 frames a second. I decided let's, let's try it out on the, on the 1080 because that would be better, right? Wrong. That uh, FPS counter says 60 frames a second, but it does not feel like 60 frames a second. No, sir. Um, so thankfully Proton to the rescue, it's getting about uh, 80 to hundred frames a second, relatively smooth, actually playable at this point. Uh, unfortunately there was no cloud save support. So I had to start the game three separate times and I'm a little done with it. Uh, graphics. Yeah, they definitely appear on the screen. And if I can say one nice thing about the controls, if you play it in native mode and you plug a DualShock 4 into the on, into your computer, it shows you the correct prompts. And that's all I'm going to say about it. It gets two <laughs> chairs. Yeah, well, it launched out of the box. Uh, really, no complaints there. Uh, over here on Solus 4 with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080. Uh, the performance, yeah. So the performance on the native version, which is what you're looking at in the video right now, uh, it's always somewhere between 30 and 50 burps. Uh, changing graphical settings between like low, uh, medium, high, or very high made zero fucking difference. Uh, and I thought, okay, maybe let's lower the resolution. Maybe that'll help. Oh, the resolution thing is broken. It only shows you zero by zero. <laughs> yes, you you, you, you have one. Okay. You have exactly one resolution choice. Right. Yeah. So, full screen. <laughs> you want you want to play at another resolution? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, he was yeah, hanging out with much. that monitor choice too much. <laughs> no, yeah. 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 The graphics. Yeah. Well, they work. I didn't notice anything that shouldn't be there or looked out of place. Uh, controls. The controls. Uh, I thought I was alone in this, but the controls try to. Uh, like they tied a proper knot around my brain. Uh, I thought that wasn't a technical fault of the game because I assumed that this was the intention of the developers. It's like, okay, let's make the controls a bit of a thing to get people to learn it. I, I couldn't, the DualShock 4 worked, like Jordan already mentioned, that worked just fine. So yeah, I, I'll give it three, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> yep, yep. So the game's a bit of a busted piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> Just, was, 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 was it, but, you know, we, we've had games that maybe run like ass, but are actually relatively fun. We've had games was, that didn't even launch. That, yeah, this is true. <laughs> so did, did, did you have fun with this, Ben, running into a dumpster over and over again? This is what you hope, though. I mean, when you deal with just such staggering incompetence, you're like, well, it'll, maybe, maybe it'll be fucky, you know, and that like, ah, uh, we got to have a good time. Maybe I'll stream some of this. And I, I was kind of thinking about that for a minute. What we have here is Excite Bike uh, with kind of like Psychonauts graphics, something going on. But out of the box, you just got to say, man, the controls for this game are simply bullshit, period. Like wacky, floaty, insanely, just straight up what the hell bad. Almost amusingly fun until I got to a part that required me to raise air quotes around that um, a, a drill that was going down several ramps of scaffolding and all that. You ever try to race down this drill on scaffolding in like one tenth of earth gravity? It's impossible. It was funny for like the first 19 times I attempted it. Fortunately, this all takes place in the first 60 minutes, so make use of that refund if you pick this up. And you might have, because it was on sale, kind of cheap, way down from its normal price, because fuck you, and that's why. Um, yeah, man, I mean, the controls, even if they made sense with a controller, and they don't, uh, I couldn't recommend it. And um, it, it's fucking excite bike with flaming spinny death wheels, and they somehow, somehow managed to cock it that up. How? In closing, I'm just going to say this, man. 
you know, this game's less than a year old. This is not like we're ragging on, you know, a game made three or four years ago, maybe using like SDL one or something like, no, 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 no. Uh, their native version that they put out less than 12 months ago is absolute junk. You can do Unreal Engine 4 on Linux correctly. We've seen it. We've been there. We have the socks. Um, this, these, these shitheads just tap that export button, fam, and shipped. And that's bullshit. Shame bell for you, which I might have almost bought on Amazon today when I wrote that in the show notes. And I didn't because I'm trying to be responsible. Yeah, that, that that same day delivery is a bit of a bitch. Sometimes <laughs> you're like, can can I? Uh, yeah. We'll have to wait a couple days. No, I can just get it tonight. Fuck. All right. Yeah. Um, excited bite with a plot could be an okay base for a game, right? You just you know have to yeah. get the, the, ga- the game portion right. The controls, yeah, they're, they're they're terrible. They're awful. You can you can go left. You can go right with the trigger buttons. Um, sometimes you can influence your lane, uh, with, uh, with Did you get a little bit excited when you saw that you could, like, um, stick to the aluminium things? I was like, well, this could be fun. No, this isn't Yeah, fun. like, oh, if, if, if it got worked in, interestingly, mm-hmm. but it does not. It, it gets worked in in very fucky ways. Um, but yeah, like, th- no, no amount of rail grinding or murder wheelies is gonna change the fact that, like, I can't interact with the core systems of the game without shit just going completely fucking weird <laughs> floaty moon gravity land I, I don't know it's 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 just not fun what you didn't um, tap out the first time you did a, a successful somersault and a choppa no i didn't i didn't uh but but like that that's the thing i, I had to start and play this game three times mm. and at, you know after after time number three playing it in proton the the added actual playability was was, was almost almost gave me the desire to like continue on for another level or two. But then I just kind of stopped caring, right? Like, if the rest of the game is just going to be these crappy controls and trying to cheese my way to victory, that that's not my idea of fun. At, at least games that require you to do that sometimes can do it in a fun way. This is not fun. Uh, this just made, this just made me want to like Pedro, yeah, flip, wah, flip wah. my motorcycle over on my head and break my neck and die because then I won't have to play this game anymore. One chair. Holy fuck. You have not figured this out yet. Yeah, no, it took me a while to figure that one okay. out. Uh, the something about this game had my brain rejecting. That's the point where I got it. Uh, had my brain rejecting it all the time I was playing through it. Uh, my hands, they just couldn't learn the buttons, uh, like the taps and the double taps, regardless of whether I use the controller or the keyboard. Uh, the constant herky jerks and enemies attacking you from off screen. I really couldn't find it in me to learn how to control this. I was just not having fun. And the bit at the end of this particular level, which is the drill bit that Ven already mentioned, uh, that was the proverbial nail in the coffin for me because I, no. I, I wasn't having fun. Uh, it, the sole reason I kept going was out of sheer stubbornness and the fact that OBS was recording at the time. It's like, okay, I'm going to have to fucking do it. That'll do it. Uh, but yeah, it's n- nothing. <sighs> there's really nothing <laughs> Finn, to this period. game. <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing. There's no- there, there's nothing. There's just nothing. It's it, it's one chair. It's wow. I I just don't know how you not not you personally. I don't know how they cock this up. So I mean, all right. This is something that upset me just watching your playthrough. You have these this moon physics, right? Where you just mm-hmm. float around, but motherfucker, you land on your head. That's instant death. And you have a life yep. system too. Three lives, really. What year is this? <laughs> Well, you, yeah, you, I mean, if, if if you get all the goals, you can buy yourself extra life or extra energy because they have that, like, upgrade system. I, I, I applaud you, Pedro, for getting through this part because, I mean, I laughed probably for the first five or six times. It's like, fuck this game. Fuck this Drill! game. Drill! Drill! <laughs> then I got serious with it, and it, it was still kicking my ass and my teeth all at the same time. It was am a teeth riest. Yeah. It was absolutely horrible to get through this part. I got through it. You're probably not going to see the end of the of the video because there's about another ten minutes of this and me <laughs> failing miserably at it. Can 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 so... we can we fast forward or are we just gonna wait? no? <laughs> we're, we're, we're just gonna remain with Pedro's failure. Just deal with it. Use <laughs> just, your imagination. Yeah. Just, that, and that and that's basically the game's thesis. Just fucking deal with it. Yeah. I didn't, oh, and I and you shouldn't either. So. That does it for us. Coming up next, we got some hate mail. 
We're gonna we're, we're gonna talk about sadness and our feelings because they matter in the long term, right? Yeah. If you found the flying spaghetti monster, or at least the will to worship a higher entity, over the course of this podcast, honestly, I don't blame you. And if you'd like to tell us about it, because chances are we ruined your life somehow, you can go to LilyScapeCast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. Make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you're sending your hate mail to, and we'll be happy to feature it right here, right now. Um, You ruined my life, so I have some hate mail. Look, it's been five years, Jordan. Get over it. No. (laughs) That's your that's your answer to everything these days. <laughs> no. no, time heals everything. Jordan should that, just get over it. I'm just saying. I, that, 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 that is a big I, I fat don't lie. want either of you to be sad. <laughs> well, 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 well. The soul that is. This is a big one. Uh, the cliff note is uh, that we were talking about uh, the open Final Fantasy VIII uh, re-implementation. I had asked the question, hey, is there any engine overlap between 7, 8, and 9? Because they're both made on the PlayStation. And the Sildat has an answer for us. And the answer is apparently squ- uh, then Squaresoft, they weren't Squeenix at the time, are completely, mm-hmm. were completely fucking mental and developed three separate distinct engines for their three games on the PlayStation. So, no. My my dream of having unified Final Fantasy open source Linux engine is Dash. He also talks a little bit about um, the soundtrack, uh, Pedro. Uh, yeah, play because taste. I had asked if they, uh, with the Final Fantasy uh, re-implementation, if they could maybe, you know, have the PlayStation music, which was so awesome compared to the PC version, but... Apparently not, because they are using a, or they were using a custom sound font all the way up to, uh, according to Sildat, the Final Fantasy XII. Uh, they had a custom MIDI sound font going for the console versions, which was not available on PC. So, yeah, dick move there, Squeenix or Squaresoft. <laughs> At the time, now now it's yeah. Squeenix. You can, you, you, can, you can blame Squeenix. It's fine. Where's Final yeah. Fantasy 13 or 15 on Linux? Uh, isn't one of the Final <laughs> Fantasy games like uh, whitelisted on Proton? I think it was the MMO. Oh, yeah, it was uh, Final Fantasy 14. That, yeah. that that's an extra slice of nope sandwich. All right, see, uh, I I just maintain the I don't really know what a Final Fantasy is, and I want to keep it that way. So indeed, uh, up next is Hitler. Well, it's well Richard. Uh, <laughs> Richard says, uh, don't know if uh, if you're still curious, but the reason Hero Siege got voted negatively is because they changed the game mechanics. It was wave-based, but they changed it to you have to wander around the map and kill the groups of monsters. P.S. If you got a blank message before, I hit the wrong button on my keyboard. Uh, well, that's apparently what we the... can show the, yeah. the empty <laughs> message because he did send it. So that, thanks, that, uh, that, Richard. That, that, that explains that. All right. <laughs> yep. Mystery uh, solved. And uh, the other thing was about, uh, we were talking about Hero Siege, and I brought up the fact that the like the recent reviews were mixed. And a lot of people weren't happy with some of the decisions that the uh, devs have made, but I honestly couldn't figure out for the life of me by reading the Steam forums what the hell those decisions were. Uh, so it's like, okay, yeah, I guess it's just mixed now, but there it is. Uh, apparently it was a simple change that instead of having the enemies come at you, you have to go to the enemies. That, okay. All right. I've seen people get, uh, mad about less, but okay. People, people will literally get <laughs> mad about a font change, so... <laughs> We don't have time to get into that because on that bombshell, let's not cue the time raptors. Not yet. Ah, clever girl. Let's cue the music. You can always find us at Aha. I didn't forget about it. Uh, Eight thirty Eastern Standard Time. Punch that into Googs. Maybe into the Bings. The Bings will invade you with time raptors. So maybe not a good idea. Where we go live an hour before that. We're in the pre-pre super shows starting at seven thirty Eastern Time. Come say hi in Discord and uh, wave, and we'll talk to you back. It'll be terrifying. In the meantime, 
Uh, you can get a hold of me. I'll be in uh, Shadow Realm and Discord during the week. We got IRC, that's the thing. Or just Advinstone on Twitter, or we have a thing, mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm there. I think I'm just at Vin or Old Man Vin or at something. Type in V and have fun. At V, 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 the game. Um, I, I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me wandering through jungles, getting snuck up on and devoured by clever girl time raptors at the Burning Fool on Twitter or at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm at Brojo. You can find me at an accounted for on Twitter or, yeah, if you're on our Discord, just, you know, at me and I'll uh, get you back don't, to you. You don't have to add him. Just, just mention, breathe his name I, silently. I, I, and he just comes no, up just, just allude to Portugal and he'll show up. I am usually always there. I always have it open in some screen somewhere. So I'll be reading everything as it goes. I'm a lurker. It's what he, I do. He, 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 he's an eye from season two of Ogretzka. <laughs> there you go. That's a reference for you. V um. for whatever. All right. Give him some credit. We're going to, speaking of credits, we're going to roll yours because they're awesome. You make this shit possible. And that, that questionable decision, but we thank you for it. Boom. Someone oh, has yeah. to. <laughs> Wargies! You always trust the Wargies! <laughs> they got nerfed, though. They were totally nerfed. They're still more powerful than you, Pedro. <laughs> still more powerful you strike than this you. this Corgi down? I'm in Team Corgi. Because well, we got Fink out there like, in Boxstock, oh, well, like Empty, Atomic Ass, Mark G, Barbara Am, Drummer, Aldeus, Haplo, MacGeek, and, and Strider! All right, let's go. Look at all Martin. the producers! Daniel, Chris, Chris, Craig, Steven, Simcha, Emerald, JT. Got Rudy this week. Tomas, I, I'm, Earl. I'm, I'm just, just going to say they're all Martin. So uh, Martin, Mike, Martin, <laughs> Martin, Martin, <laughs> Martin. <laughs> Mike, W. Um, Christopher C. Raisin. Thomas, hold on. Dominic, um, Ulrich, Odung. Oh, shit. Do I have Frank? Frank, Frank are you here, buddy? Yes. Frank. <laughs> Bring it in. Yeah. Always Christmas time. Indeed. Frank, that's the reason Frank got punched, man. <laughs> uh, we we, 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 we got to get Frank a new grill one of these days. That's a Patreon goal. Oh, get him like man. a little John grill. <sighs> <sighs> Hashtag Frank's bracers. Ha Hashtag Frank grill. You got to get Frank a grill. <laughs> For a minute there, it took... Dying fire. One of the Bye, bye ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> They're always sending hate mail, Mir. <laughs> Five dudes.